So we will be able to do wide stereoscopic pan zooms looking over our shoulder and all that kind of stuff. Now we can't get the data back the way he would when he filmed Avatar in New Zealand because Mars is unfortunately rather far away. But we will get pieces and he will make Mars the movie in 3D um, as part of his job to bring Mars to you. And the other reason for that imaging system is by having that wide field of view, we can better plan where we want to go. MER is like looking like this and hoping once a day to get a picture back we plan. This will look at the room the way we see it and we can dial in 10x. So I could look back and see what the camera guy back there is doing. Make sure he's not making fun of me. It's okay. And check it out. We can do that with this vehicle. So MSL is our first mission to search for the building blocks of life. Sometime in the next 10 or 15 years, the next part of the legacy of getting to Mars will happen. Before we send you to Mars, most engineers and scientists believe we have to go to Mars and bring back a piece of Mars to Earth intentionally, the right piece, safely. That it will be the most complicated robotic mission ever done by women and men. Seriously, it's tougher than Hubble. And this is what it might look like. The Mars Sample Return Mission is a favored mission in the planning for what we do to planets, we're robots, for the next 15 years. We will land a vehicle that will descend to Mars in a place where we think the, the materials, the rocks, will tell us things about whether Mars was ever alive. Um, it will land using a sky crane on a big lander. The lander, in this case, will carry a small vehicle to sample the rocks and then a, basically a cruise missile-like rocket to blast the samples back out of the Mars atmosphere, 40% the gravity of the Earth, and put them on a place where we could go get them and bring them home. This will be an incredible mission. You can see the rover, uh, communications gear. This is a solar-powered mission, we hope, to save some money. Little fetch rover to go get the thing and then the rocket to bring the thing back. This will be an amazing mission. We have, this is an artist rendering of what we hope it will look like. You guys will see the results of that class of mission. Now someday, and I can't vouch for the date, someday the first human mission to Mars will occur. Whether it looks like this international mission here coming in on this kind of vehicle, I can't say. It would be silly for me to design it for you today. You guys are going to have to design it. But our president said on April 15th, Mars is the goal. And while well, these guys look a little unhappy on their landing, um, I think if you were going to Mars for the first time as people of planet Earth, I think you'd be rather excited because it's a big place. You're not going to get stuck on Gilligan's Island if you get to Mars. Plenty of stuff to do. Um, it's like an amusement park for science and engineering. So how we land, don't know. This is one model. Here's a couple of women and men wandering around the surface. But needless to say, getting people there will increase the pace of how fast we learn about living off planet and going to other worlds beyond anything I can tell you about, seriously. But I thought I'd finish in my last two minutes, if you will give me one more second, to show you what it might be like if you or I were to go to Mars. So Mars is Rising, this was a program on Discovery Channel and other channels as well. So we decided to go and try to bring Mars on Earth to you. So I filmed this with some colleagues. This is the newest land on Earth, the island of Circe off the coast of Iceland, formed in the 60s from volcanic eruptions from 200 meters deep water to make new land. Here's what it looks like coming in. We actually had a cameraman hanging out the window of the helicopter, not the safest thing. Um, here's gullies that formed in the rocks that formed from that stuff. The seaweed, of course, we wouldn't expect on Mars. These are gullies, just like we see on Mars. This is what they would look like. So imagine trying to traverse those yourself in a spacesuit where you don't want to fall down, wouldn't be good. You don't have a lot of time, you got to do a lot of work. And this is what it would look like to go up through a cross section of the kind of gullies we might find on Mars. Every one of these layers where you see bomb sags and all kinds of volcanic stuff could contain chemical tracers, as you see even here, there's me, um, well, I'm showing the sun with my Mars pen, showing the signs of life. Yeah, I know you're laughing. It was a, actually a warm day. This is what we hope to find. This little zone, this steam vent with this green smudgy stuff is the kind of place that some astrobiologists think life could have sprung forth on Earth. We could have had hot vents, and the crusty things here are actually colonial colonies of cyanobacteria growing in a place that did not exist 45 years ago. So Circe is the kind of place where we get in one little area a microcosm. In other places in Iceland, which are amazingly accessible as a place to think about Mars on Earth, you can wander right up to a place where the geothermal energy that makes new crust under the ocean in 40,000 kilometers of mid-ocean ridges comes on land. So we wandered right up to these places that would be roped off with chains and guns and other places, walked right up to them to sample the materials. This would be our dream for Mars. These hot springs we find in places like Iceland, Hawaii, deep in the seafloor, 
here blowing steam and gases, are the kind of place where some scientists believe life could get its cradle. It's warm, it's wet, it's full of energy, it's full of nutrients. There you see a little microvolcano. That's my finger going over it. Um, all of these are interesting minerals involving sulfur and iron, the bubbling bud pots. Again, we think we see mineral expression of these kind of things like that on Mars today from orbit. So if that happened from orbit and we can see it, then what's it like when you go up close? Well, we don't know. We haven't been. They're harder to get to. But MSL has the tools, and there I am sampling a big colony of cyanobacteria, my name on my hammer. Um, this is billions of single-celled organisms growing in a slime across a hot geothermal vent in Iceland. We have similar things in Yellowstone, um, in the Azores, and other places. So let me finish with the following thoughts. Um, I'm going to finish, if you don't mind, with a little bit of art history. In 1958, a famous American painter um, known as Georgia O'Keeffe painted this picture the ladder to the moon from her house in Taos, New Mexico. She was a modernist, um, worked with Stieglitz and others, if you know our history. Um, she painted a lot of things that are kind of neat, you know, skulls of cows dying in the desert. She painted this too. It was painted on the eve of the formation of NASA. Very interesting. She exposed it for the first time in the late 50s, right as NASA was born as an organization. Now, you guys are all young. It's a long time ago, the 50s. They were all nuts. Okay, understood. But her vision for that painting a ladder to the moon by people, was resolved within a decade. Within a decade, Americans flew in orbit around the moon on spacecraft, Apollo 8, and within another year, we landed on the surface of another world. No human being has been back since. So we, she left a legacy in art. And the question to you all to think about, as many of you embrace your careers and your interests over the next 30 or 40 years, where do you want to go? Where do you want your generation to take the people of planet Earth? Lots of places to go. The legacy in space is an interesting thing. We live in space. Our planet is pummeled by cosmic collisions, by the effect of the sun, um, by how our planet was even potentially seeded with the building blocks of life. We don't know the answers. But there will be a new ladder by some new artist and group of engineers and scientists like you that will take us somewhere. There's the moon, seen at um, half phase from New Mexico in 1958, a long time ago. What will be next? Our president on April 15th said, that's your goal. It's a hard goal. It's a worthy goal. The first nation or group of nations that get there will have boldly changed the way technology is done. And I don't know how you'll go. But if you choose to go, I promise you, because I've studied Mars my full lifespan, I promise you, you will find something literally earth-shattering. So it's a big solar system. We started with our own planet and looked at a lot of these worlds. Enigmatic Venus, tempting Mars, our own world. A lot to learn. But I think now is the time, in this time of scientific revolutions on these worlds, to think about where you're going to go. So the science is ready. I hope you're ready. Thanks very much.